Hey guys, what's up? It's Ryan. Today I'm going to be talking about the six things I think you need in your home kitchen. Um, this is just coming from a perspective of things that I use more frequently than other things that kind of just sit around in my drawer. All the things that I'm going to be talking about today, I'm going to provide a link down in the description. Um, it's all available on Amazon for around 10 to $15. So if there's anything that you think, hmm, I need that, then feel free, go ahead, click on one of the links. Um, I do get a little bit of a kickback from it if you buy anything, so that helps me. But let's get into the six things I think you guys need. See the finger guns? So first thing I think you guys need in a home kitchen is a decent spatula. I've mentioned this before, but I really just want to emphasize how cheap it is to get a good one. And first thing I want to note is the shape of the spatula. You can get one that is kind of like this and it's flat. Um, this has some good uses, uh, not saying that it's completely uh, unusable, but it is quite firm right here, which I personally like. But then also I like this shape here. Um, you're able to scrape out a bowl a lot easier than this shape. You can use this to like pick up eggs in a pan. Like if I'm searing mushrooms, I like to use a spatula. And like if I'm mixing some kind of sauce and scraping it around the edges so it doesn't burn, I generally choose something this shape. So the next thing we have is a vegetable peeler. Some people have preferences for what shapes you want. Um, personally, I think that this one here is the best. I actually have four of these vegetable peelers because I just think that if I ever lose one, I never want to go without one. Um, this is like a Swedish carbon steel blade, so it's gonna stay super sharp all the time. Um, it's a perfect handle, it's got a little hole in it so you can like get a little bit extra leverage as you're like peeling your carrot or maybe in like a little finger hold here. So like if I'm like doing Parmesan or something to finish a dish, I'm able to just like really have a good grip on my vegetable peeler. Um, it's not two ways, I find that the ones that you go back and forth, you just take too much of the vegetable off and you're just wasting your own food. Yeah, the one that I have linked, it is three of these for like 22 bucks. There is an option on the same link for just ordering one, which I think is like 10 bucks or something. But 100%, this is the best vegetable peeler. And another thing I haven't had in my kitchen for a while is a rolling pin. I don't know if you've seen any of my stories on Instagram or maybe videos. I don't know if I've ever used a wine bottle as a rolling pin in a video before, but that's what I've been doing for about a year. I thought it was like finally time for me to get a rolling pin. Um, what I avoided was getting one with the handles and then this being separate spinning. I'm not a big fan of those. I find that you don't have as much control over how far you're going. At the same time, I think that sometimes they can get wobbly and it's just like, it's like riding a motorcycle and you're like, ah, where am I going? Yeah, no, I, I think that the control with like just a solid wooden piece, it does have a bit of a bow in it. So the center is going to push out a little bit more. Next up, we have some barbecue tongs. I think these are 10 inch barbecue tongs. The ones I have in the, in the description are 12 inch. So they're a bit longer, um, maybe like that big, which I think are a little bit easier. You can stay a little bit further away from the bacon on the pan. Barbecue tongs are pretty simple. Um, some have a locking mechanism. I think the ones that I linked do. Um, this one doesn't. This one's actually like super cheap. Um, it's like super flimsy and like easily bent. Like I could probably just like bend this. Yeah, like I can just bend that. So something that's like a little bit more rigid is ideal. Um, the more you heat something up that's metal, it's gonna bend easier. So if you're constantly working over top of your barbecue at home or if it's like touching hot stuff like above a gas range, they're just gonna like warp more over time unless they're a higher quality. You can also do tweezers, which are a bit longer and narrower. Um, I find that they're a bit better for more precision, but at the same time, they are more expensive. One thing I do like about having tongs is that you can just pick stuff up with it. It's like an extension of your hand. Salad tongs, I guess these are called. Yeah, barbecue tongs, salad tongs, same thing. Hmm. Um, yeah, I do like the fact that these are an extension of the hand. So if like I've got a hot tray in the oven and my other hand is like full of something hot, I can just grab with these tongs and just like, oh yeah, cool, I got it. And then it out. 
Ah, ah. And next, a squeeze bottle. The ways that I use my squeeze bottles the most is like making a vinaigrette. What I generally do is I have one for olive oil as well as one for canola oil. I just keep them beside my stove and then we fill them with bigger jugs so I don't have to buy a bunch of smaller jugs all the time. Another thing you can do is have like little stoppers on the top. I don't use those. You can also get smaller ones like this, um, different sizes. So you can just put a little bit of something. Um, you can also just like cut these off if you want to like put like a really thick sauce in it. Cut this off and it's like easy for your burgers or sandwiches or whatever you're making. And the last thing is an angled measuring cup. I've actually yet to purchase one of these. Currently I'm using this tiny one cup, 225 milliliter um, measuring cup. It's actually really bad. Uh, it doesn't even have like a pour spout. If I'm pouring it, it just like comes down the side sometimes. So what's nice about the one that is angled is it actually does have a pour spout. Also, if you're lazy and you're measuring something, you can just set it down, look into it, pour, and then you can be like, oh yeah, when to stop instead of like, ah, too much. Got it. Uh, let me know what you guys think about what things you would need in a kitchen that's under $15. If there's anything I missed, let me know. Let's talk about it. Um, anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more cooking content, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.